Welcome everyone, I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible for healing, one brave word at a time. And here today to help me with that mission are two of the most amazing authors of a new book that we have coming out. This one is called The Life-Changing Power of Self-Love an essential guide. And I'm going to introduce Heather and Stephanie to you in just a minute. But first, a humongous thank you to Tina Green, who is our lead author of this book. Tina, you had such a huge mission for this book, and I am so honored and grateful to you for it, for bringing it to me and for this collaboration. You have attracted a stellar group of authors together who are sharing their vulnerable stories. And this book is packed with practical strategy for this self-love thing, which sometimes feels impossible. And I love that you took this on. And again, so, so grateful that we're doing this book together. So who do I have here in my Zoom room today? I have some power in my Zoom room. Heather Westling is the founder and creator of Sacred Life's Journey. She's a personal freedom coach where she guides and supports clients who say yes to themselves to their to live their life. Heather, thank you for being here today. And Reverend Stephanie Urbina Jones is the co-founder of the nonprofit Freedom Folk and Soul and the CEO, rock star, Shamama entertainer and writer with a passion for transformation. She's your midwife, priestess and sacred witness. Uh, that will guide you from your crossroad moments of pain to passion, purpose, and living the life of your dreams. Welcome, Stephanie. So ladies, let's, let's do this. Let's talk about some self-love. Heather, let me start with you. Tell us about the amazing chapter that you wrote for this book. Yes, um, thank you for this opportunity to be here today. Uh, my chapter is chapter nine, saying yes to me committing to self-love, to amplifying life. This chapter is focused on employment and being in a toxic environment. And when you're starting to become aware of repeated patterns from a past that was toxic to where you're putting your foot down and saying yes to yourself and leaving with no guilt, no shame, no regret. Oh, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> I mean, this is, I think that's probably one of the hardest things to do is to get to the point because you're, you're saying it and you're like deal breaker, man, you've got that energy about it, but how does somebody get to actually being able to get there? I know this has been a lifelong journey for you. Yes, it was not easy. It was very challenging. It didn't happen overnight to where sometimes I wish it did. Um, just many years of doing deep personal work and growth and really stepping into your power. And when you're becoming aware of patterns and beliefs of where there was harm and just a lot of negative and you're realizing it, becoming aware, it's like, wow, I really need to say yes to leaving this environment. Because in the past, I did self-harm. I attempted suicide. And when I started becoming aware of how my mental health was, I was like, I do not want to go down that road. Again, because the two choices I had at the time was death or incarceration. And I did not want to go down that path again. So I said, I'm not doing it. No, I have to go. Well, you mentioned awareness. I think awareness is everything. Awareness gives us a choice. And you also said, you know, this is not an easy road. Sometimes I have to chuckle because we are talking about things that are very difficult and I want people to know it's totally worth it. So I am assuming you would agree with me. It's totally worth it. Why? Why? How can we talk them into the hard work of healing? It is so worth it um, because I was realizing that my life was not the same. And then when I left, I was like, I'm much more happier. I am following my dream, what my true life calling was. I'm back in school, going to be finished in December for a paralegal certificate. 
And then I'm going to be possibly attending law school either late next year or early of 2025. And so becoming awareness of this, this is my life and that toxic environment is not going to hold me back from living my life. Congratulations on those achievements. That's so amazing. I'm so excited to hear about that piece of your journey and where it's taken you. And yeah, that's thank you for that, because that's what I want to go along with when we talk about how hard it is, is also talking about there are some real big gifts if people stay the course and do this work and especially doing it together. Um, so Heather, thank you for, thanks for being here today and thanks for sharing. Stephanie, you. tell us about your amazing chapter. So my chapter is chapter number 23. It's called Mama Your Trauma, um, a runway to rebirth, mothering as a journey to self-love. Shazam. <laughs> Shazam is right. Tell me more. <laughs> well, it wasn't a chapter at all that I intended to write. And, um, but it's the chapter that needed to be written. Um, before I had my daughter, um, I had a really, I didn't know how to live. I was in a lot of tremendous emotional pain and I didn't know how to get free. And I had since a very young child had, uh, thought about taking myself out because I didn't know how to deal with my pain. And so when I had my daughter, before I had my daughter, I made a commitment to myself that I had to find a way to learn how to live because I could not pass this lineage on to her of suffering. And so this was my journey because as we parent our children at whatever age, whatever trauma, whatever is disassociated or not present will be present in the way that we parent it can't help, but it shows up in the lives of our children in all kinds of ways and in our hearts and lives. And so her being a mother to her was my invitation over and over and over again to mama, my trauma and to get myself free. You're making me think um, a little bit too about just what I said to Heather about, you know, there are some big gifts on the other side of this journey. And you're also talking about some very difficult, sometimes impossible feeling work in terms in the name of healing, right? But I think of my daughter too. And so I love that you're talking about that because our work goes in, in both directions, um, back up towards our parents and grandparents, and then down towards our children, their children. What else do you want people to know about that? I want people to know that I absolutely believe a thousand percent that we came here on purpose and that our wounds, our traumas were as, as hard as this is. I've seen it over and over and over again as a teacher and a teacher of teachers, that those wounds are sacred and on purpose. And that when we take them to task, when we go back and haunt and rescue, do the sacred work within our own body, because those traumas, those stories are held in our lineage. They're, it's in our bones, it's in our DNA. And when we go back and haunt them and rescue ourselves, feel, heal, reveal, witness, and then release that trauma, what comes back to us is compassion and grace and love and wisdom and power. And from that place, then we dream our life forward sharing that love with our children, with everyone in the grocery line, with our lovers. And so it's worth it 
it's always worth it. It's so hard to go back to it. I spent three weeks writing my chapter in a deep, dark depression I had not felt in 18 years. I had to go back to it to rescue that girl that I left behind in all that pain. And the ways that we teach and hold with our journeys in the medicine wheel and freedom, folk, and soul is how we guide people back to those sacred moments to release that toxic shame, pain, um, stories to freedom. And I see it over and over again in my life, in the people that we serve's life. And uh, it's it's amazing to witness other people live their dreams that are buried in the buried in our hearts, you know. So it's amazing. I, don't know if I answered that, but and yeah. I do believe that it, like you said, it's you know the indigenous believe it's seven generations forward and it's seven generations backward. Our lineage from the past wants us to be the one. Please be the one to release that lineage of pain for them. They want to be released. And our lineage forward wants to move forward in their love and freedom and wisdom. So it's worthy work. So Stephanie, when you think about self-love, you think about that journey for you personally, and you think about all of the people out there who are diving onto that path, what do you think is the one most important thing about it? What do you want people to know? I know there's probably a hundred things, but try to pick one. We need a sacred witness and guide to walk with us and be our person in that moment that always comes, that unbearable moment that all of your agreements, your stories, I'm unworthy, I'm unlovable, I'm wanted, I'll never get over this, this will never work, I will never love myself, I'm a whatever, whatever the stories are, they're going to come up in the moment, life is going to serve you a beautiful bonfire, and we can't do that alone, we have to have someone that is safe enough for us to call in the middle of the night for that moment of breakdown and breakthrough to say, come on, a midwife, so to speak, that we trust. And that changes everything to be held and witnessed and guided in that moment to the other side of our freedom. It's probably the most important thing. So, I 100% agree, and I'm going to play devil's advocate because we hear over and over that this is an inside solo job. So why? Why do I need a witness? Um, I'm, you know, I know the answer, but I want to hear yours. You need a witness because you weren't witness in that sacred moment. You were in it alone, and that's your story that you're bonded, trauma bonded to, that you're alone. And it goes with all the other ones that then it tags on to like, you're not worthy, you're not wanted, you're not lovable, whatever your core things are, you were in it alone. And, and we can't fully do that alone. For me, that has been the this, this sacred moment of like, in a movie of the breakthrough moment when someone, when, when I feel so unworthy of love, when my stories are just all up and in me and I have the courage, which is the hard part at that moment to reach out and whether it's somebody on the phone listening while I just come undone and all that pain and shame is that stored in my body and in my, th that I've been stuffing for all those years and all these ways just comes flooding out and someone is there to witness it. That is grace. That is sacred. And that is what changes everything. Mm, thank you for that. I want people to really let that soak in for a minute. And I could stay on that for probably three more hours, but I want to hop over to Heather and have her tell us, um, Heather, what's the one 
most important thing you want people to know about this self-love journey? There's so much to say about it and about Stephanie, you know, I agree with her about having witnesses, but then also being your own witness, really being seen within yourself. Your soul can see you, but can you see your soul? And so when you become aware and you are seeing yourself, seeing the transformations, it does amplify your life. Your vibrations are higher. You're much more happier. Your dreams are becoming real and just living it instead of having the traumas live you. Because when or in that trauma moment, the traumas take over. But then when you start self-loving yourself, the energies of the traumas are lessened. And then you start living it your way you are honoring those traumas because they came to you for a purpose as stephanie was saying yeah i think but there's... then at the same time you have to live your life yeah sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you i think we're You're fine lagging a little bit um i think i you make me think of responding versus reacting in life and this is the gift of this awareness is that gift that allows you to respond and not constantly react to every little thing. Um, and, be, and between what you're saying in terms of being your own witness, I really do love that journaling and writing. Is that for me? It's an awareness process where I actually get to be my own witness of whatever those limiting beliefs are. And then when you find another human as a guide and witness that's another level and layer that is so so powerful so i think there's there's an important thing about that thing we've been told about it's a solo journey i don't know why today it's like i want to keep pausing there and say we were lied to <laughs> like it's not all that like that isn't the whole picture you guys like what if a community or even one sacred witness changed everything for you right would you just keep thinking that it all has to be done alone by yourself it's like oh my gosh right i want people to understand this so I love what both of you are saying for these reasons, because I think it's a combination. I think it's steps and layers and, and different things here. Um, okay, so just kind of moving on on this theme into the connection, which you both are have spent lifetimes working on. Heather, I think authentic healers and coaches know that we don't fix people we empower them to connect to their own inner wisdom. So I'd love for you to share one way you personally practice connecting to that inner wisdom. You've talked a lot about awareness. Give us a little window. What does that look like when you actually do it? Sometimes it's hard to put it into words because there's really no words to really describe on how it works. It's just more of that feeling. Um, it's just when your eyes that are in your head start becoming more outward to where you're seeing yourself and you're just like all of a sudden your brain shifts and it's like, ha ha, here's your moment. You, you know, this is what is needing to be attended to. This is you know, this is what's causing you to feel this way, why you are reacting instead of responding. It's like taking your eyes and just turning them around to where it's facing you. And it's just, it, it's just that vibration in the body. It's like your soul is coming outward to be that mirror of this is where you're at. This is what needs to be aware of. I would assume you're not always in it, that it's a dance back and forth. You probably fall out of awareness. You come back into awareness. 
what would be like what's your technique for purposefully going there is it just that you kind of wake up in the moment or do you sit every day in stillness in some sort of practice just varies on what it needs to be um, most of the time i have to sit and really meditate into what is it and then there are times to where it's i have to be actionable with it where i have to dance with it to really fully bring that energy out because sometimes the energy can get stuck and then it becomes what do i do what am i not seeing and then when you start dancing with it then you can start seeing the whole picture because it's moving and you're able to perceive it a lot better i appreciate um you talking about the way that you talk about it and i love these collaborative books for this exact reason is because you're all bringing your unique way your unique voice and your unique tools to the party and we have to hear about it in all these different ways to find the one way we needed to hear it and um so thank you both for for really taking on the challenge both in the book and then even here today Stephanie, what's one of the personal ways you practice connecting to that inner wisdom? Well, I just kind of have to laugh because I mean, the truth is I'm a meditator. I have always, I've meditated. So I drop into my energy field and then I walk with that awareness. Now I am able to inhabit that more and more because of that, the healing work I've done inside. But the truth is, is that, you know, as a Toltec teacher, you know, we say this, we're dreaming all the time that life is always reflecting back exactly where we're at, you know, and, and what needs to be worked on. So then my practice is that I bump up against something uncomfortable in me or uncomfortable in a situation with someone that I love. And there becomes my immediate call to action of work. What's going on in that, Stephanie? Where? What's the break in, in you? Why did you say that in that way? Why did you react that way? You know, because now I know it's just like I'm I'm living a pretty beautiful life. And so when something happens where there's something between me and someone I care about, it's not usually them. It's usually me. And so it's that taking personal responsibility and then again, looking in and saying, what's going on? What needs my attention inside of me? And then making amends if I need to, right? So that responsibility, um, and it, I never thought about it this way, but it is an act of self-love because now I love to feel good. I love to be in great relationships. I love um, watching people's dreams come true and living my dreams, right? I love that you're able to talk about using the feeling of discomfort in your body as the sign to pause. This is such a powerful tool. I, I think we should have the entire interview about it. It's so important because when you can use that body awareness to make the pause, man, you're 50% there already, maybe even more than 50% there, but um, it's not an easy thing to get to the place where you're really great at that. I know that you've spent a lifetime honing that way. I call them ninja moves, you know, <laughs> of awareness because they are right. We have to give ourselves credit for the practice we've put into this. So when you feel it, I know, well, how about I'll, I'll say when I feel it, it's in my heart. How about you? Where, where is it when you feel it? You think I feel it in my heart, but also in my whole body. And it's usually, you know, it's a pretty quick pathway to like shame. What have I done wrong? And right to my core wounds, like, are they going to leave me? Like, it's like, I can now see it like the direct pattern of these patterns that were created in me. And it doesn't feel good. And it's hard, especially at the beginning to own it. And then you have, for me, I've had to have a certain amount of personal freedom and foundation of self-love to be able to go in 
find where that's coming from in me, that little girl at four, at seven, at 10, at 18, at 35, that is reacting and then give her what she needs, the love inside. And then almost always it, it includes me making some kind of amends, you know, and that felt like a powerless thing to do, but it's empowering to genuinely self-love, accept, honor, heal, transform, because that's how that part of me heals, and then take responsibility and be a better person with the people that I'm in relationship with. Because that's really what I want. I want love. <laughs> I think we all do. I think taking responsibility for this practice is absolutely the mark of a master and a badass. <laughs> so thank you for playing in the sandbox with me. Um, okay, I'm going to stick with you for uh, this this last question. You know, we we're talking about things that are a lifelong practice. This this awareness thing that we're talking about that's so important and getting to the point that you can fall in love with yourself sometimes can be absolutely difficult, maybe even feel impossible. So if you were to help the listeners with the easiest entry point you could think of, a simple thing, where would you start them today? I mean, of course, I'm a teacher in this. I believe in the programs that we teach. So the Toltec Medicine Wheel of Transformation is a journey back through the medicine wheel of your life where you have power loss, where you have love loss, where you have, and it's like just an amazing way to track back to the power loss and to bring ourselves home again and again. And I see over and over again for myself, within myself, and for those we serve, the the power of this journey. So, I mean, I would just say whether you come and do it online or you come to Teotihuacan and do it, um, you know, and, and the books that we do with you are also a great pathway to retract back in to come forward, but there's no easy way. And for me, it's been so important to have a guide and to have a map, um, to walk through in a community. So that's my truth. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Um, yeah. I'm, if my version to this uh, answer is always start with writing it down. Mm. So the writing for me and, and Stephanie, you always talk about the transformative power of that, um, how it's been for you. And I appreciate that. But I'll, I will tell the listeners, you know, start to write it down because that's one way you become a witness of mm. what's going on and you can look at it and really go, whoa, do I think that? <laughs> and you can start with that awareness. It's powerful. Um, Heather, how about you? What's the simple thing that you want to tell everyone in terms of just getting getting a little foot in on this journey? Well, you kind of stole it right there, writing it down, because um, <laughs> for me, writing it down and then being able to read it made me start becoming, what am I missing? What What is it that I need to do? And then from there, you know, kind of really list, like honing in internally and listening to what your soul is telling you what is it do I need, you know, and just kind of really feel and listen to what it is. And then from there, you know, you can you know, go, you know, find some books, you know, and read of what other people have experienced or reading about what, what is this, you know, like the life-changing power of self-love mm -hmm. and, it, it's just, you know, kind of stepping up into, you know, and trying to build that confidence of who can I go to? Because who can I go to? Because in a way, you're going to have to build that trust with that person, because you're going to have to start breaking open, as Stephanie would say, you know, you have to break open. And then 
being vulnerable because when someone's being vulnerable, it puts them in that discomfort place. But then at the same time, it's that's where you need to be. And then you start really loving, you know, start loving yourself. And then, of course, that could be the discomfort. But then over time, it starts becoming a little more comfortable. Yes, fully agree. Explore the discomfort, y'all. It's a treasure chest. With everything good happens in the discomfort zone, everything good. And it doesn't feel like that when you're in there, but got to kind of hang in there. Heather and Stephanie, thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today to share it with everyone. Thanks, ladies. Thank you, Laura. So if you all are loving this conversation, you're getting the goosebumps with what Stephanie and Heather are talking about. Maybe you want to carry on the conversation or you need to move a step on that journey. Pop on down into the show notes and explore their websites. I have their bios and websites hooked up down there for you. This is way more than a book. This is a generous community of professionals who are ready and they're reaching their hands out. So you can grab a hand, you can go explore their world, and they're there for you to answer those questions and carry on this pretty juicy conversation today. This is deep stuff, right? We're just hitting the surface of it with our interview. The other thing I want y'all to know about is we're going to have our book launch party with all of the authors of The Life-Changing Power of Self-Love. It's going to be November 13th. I have information about how to join our party down below. And if you happen to be listening to this interview anytime after that date, well, that just means the book is out on Amazon and you can go grab your copy. And lastly, today, everyone remember your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it is time to be brave. See you next time, everyone. Thank you, ladies.